Hello and welcome back to the Carl Lewis Academy YouTube channel to continue with building up of our network. So in the previous video, we set up Active Directory Domain Services on Windows Server 2025. So in this video, I'm going to install Windows Server 2022 and then I will also configure it as an additional domain controller. So an additional domain controller is different from a char domain controller. An additional domain controller in a way just means a backup domain controller because if you have one server as a domain controller, in case there is a hardware failure when that server crashes, then no one will be able to log on and access services on your network. So in that case, you need to have a second domain controller which will operate as a backup kind of domain controller so that when the primary domain controller fails or crashes, then the secondary domain controller can take over. So I'm just going to come back to the home screen of my VMware Workstation Pro. I'm just going to click on create a new virtual machine. I'm going to keep it to typical, go to NES. Going to install operating system later. So I will click on NES. It's going to be your Windows Server, so I will keep it to Microsoft Windows. I'm going to keep it to Windows Server 2022. I'm going to go to NES. And this is actually going to have Server 2022. So I'm just going to put one SV Arrow Server 2K22. And this is going to be our first 2K22 server. So I'll put 01 to it. I'm just going to go to NES. Going to change the hard drive to 100 gig. Keep it to split virtual disk. So I'm just going quickly through these. In, in a previous video, I have done the installation of server 2022. So I'll make sure to leave a link in the YouTube card as well as a link in the video description down below. So, so you can make sure to watch that video to follow along with the installation of Server 2022. I'm just going to go through this really fast. So I'm just going to click on the CD, DVD. I'm going to browse for the ISO image. So I'll click use ISO image. I'm going to browse the ISO for 2022. So I have the ISO for server 2022 right here. So I'll click that, click open, click OK, and then I'll just power on this virtual machine by clicking it. Now I'll click on OK, press any key to boot from CD. So now it's booting from our ISO image. So I'm going to give it a few seconds and allow it to load up. So I'm just going to expand this so that it can be big for you to see properly. So the language I'm installing in is English United States. So, and the time and date format is English United States. I'm just going to change it to English Canada. And my keyboard is US, so I'll keep it to that. I'll click on next. I'll click on install. So for the server 2022, I'm just going to take data center evaluation desktop experience, click on next. I'll accept the end user license agreement. I'll click on next. This is a new installation. So I'll click the second option, custom install Microsoft server operating system on it. I will just keep it to the one hard drive partition and I'll just click on next. And the installation will begin. So I will pause the video, allow it to install and then I will come up and set up an additional domain controller. Okay, so I'm just going to put in my password for the administrator account. Click on finish. Just going to click the send control odd put in the password. I will give it a few seconds and allow it to create the profile and log in. I will say yes for the network. I will click on local server. 
I'll click on computer name to change the computer name. Going to click on change. And this is going to be our second domain controller. So I'll put DC02. I'll click OK. I'll click OK. I'll click on close. I'll click on restart later. I'll click on IP address to change from DSCP to a static IP address. So I'll go to properties, IP version 4, properties. I'll click on use the following IP address. So I'll put 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 2 with 2 and then I'll put the IP address of our Windows Server 2025 because that's the server that has the DNS on it. So I'll click OK and this is very important. DNS is very important. Without DNS the computers will not be able to join the domain. So DNS has to be configured. That's very important. Keep that in mind. So I'll click on OK. Close. Close. I'll just restart this computer. And I will quickly install the Active Directory domain services on it. Just similar to what we did on the server 2025. And then I will join it as an additional domain controller. So I'll say restart. To continue and it's going to restart the server manager to open up I'll close this warning so I will press Windows logo and arrow to open run and test CND I'm just going to ping our primary domain controller to make sure there is connectivity between these two okay so it has reply as we can see so there is connectivity okay so the first thing I want to do is just similar to what I did previously. Click on Manage, click on Our Roles and Features. So before you configure Active Directory, you want to install the Active Directory Domain Services. So I'm going to go to Nest, going to Add Active Directory Domain Services, click on Add Features, click on Nest, click on Nest, click on Nest, Click on install. So I give you a few seconds and allow that to install. And once that is done, then we'll come and promote it to domain controller. All right, so we have successfully installed Active Directory domain services on the second Windows server, which is going to be our additional domain controller. So what we're going to do next is to click on promote this server to a domain controller. So I'm just going to click on that. And then this wizard will come up, which is the Active Directory Domain Services Configuration Wizard. So like in previous videos, we have these three options. Since this server is going to add as an additional domain controller, we're going to keep the very first option active, which is add a domain controller to an existing domain. We already set up the KLA.org domain on our Windows Server 2025. So this Windows Server 2022 is going to add as an additional domain controller. So we want to keep it to this very first option. So we will put here DC, DC01 because that's a server that has the domain services installed on it. And then we'll click on select and then we'll put in our username and password. So this is a user that has the right to perform this operation. So we'll click on OK and it will search the network and we'll find our domain. So the domain is kla.org. So I will click on that and click on OK. And then I will go to next. So you must apply a user account. So I'll go to the user account. I will come back there. Change. Okay. 
All right, so now we have come to the next screen. We want to make sure that this additional domain controller will have DNS on it. So DNS is very important. So we want to have a copy of DNS on additional domain controller. So we're going to keep DNS active. And then global catalog is a catalog, pretty much a database of all of the objects, right? So we also want to have a copy of that on the additional domain controller. But since we have a primary domain controller, the primary domain controller copy of the global catalog is going to have both rewrite functionality. Whereas additional domain controller, even though they will have a copy of the global catalog, but it's just going to be a read-only copy of the global catalog. So in an event where the primary domain controller crashes, when we hand over all of the roles to the secondary domain controller to become the primary domain controller, in that case, the global catalog would change from read-only and would become read and write. So we want to just have a copy on the secondary domain controller or every additional domain controller should always have a copy of DNS and a copy of the global catalog. For now, we are now setting it up as a read on the domain controller. We're going to do that in another video. So I'm not going to check that option. I'm just going to leave it on check. This is selected by default, the site name. Usually in Windows, the very first site is called the default first site. I've already put in my restore mode password. So I'm just going to click on next. And then it's the same DNS delegation. So we're just going to go next. So on this next screen, we have the option to install from media. So that is if we have a backup of the Active Directory database on a media, we can install it or we can just allow it to just get the information from the domain controller on the network. So we're just going to keep it to that and we're going to go to Nest. Again, it's showing us where it's going to keep the database of the Active Directory, the log file and the system vault. These are the default locations. I'm just going to keep it to those and click on Nest. Giving us a summary. I'm just going to go to Nest. It's going to go through the same prerequisite check. It's going to give that error or warning message, as you say, on the DNS delegation, but then it's going to allow us to install. So I'm just going to wait for that to happen. So again, all prerequisite check passed successfully. So that same warning on DNS delegation is here. So I'm just going to click on install. And then it's going to install this to be our secondary domain controller. So we have successfully restarted our computer. So I'm just going to log in. So this is our first time logging into the Windows Server 2022 since we set it up. So it's going to create the profile. So as you can see in the bottom right hand corner, it tells us that we are logged into a Windows Server 2022. Okay. So if we click on tools, we can see at the directory users and computers and all of those things, right? So if we just go to Active Directory Users and Computers and open that. We see our KLA domain. So when we expand this, we see domain controller. So this domain controller built-in container will have all the domain controllers that are on our network. So when I click on it, we notice there are two computers in here. Our DC01 is here and our DC02 is there. And both of these computers have the a copy of the global catalog on it. So when you look on a DC type, it's telling you that these are the, the global catalog server. And then there's the default side name. So we can see that we have successfully added an additional domain controller when we log on, on the domain controllers built in container in our Active Directory users and computers. Another thing I can do is to click on tools and go to Active Directory sites and services. 
and then we will expand the other RJ side. And then we'll come to our default first side, which is the default name for the very first side. And you, if you can remember, our additional domain controller was added to this default first side because that's the only side we have. So when we we'll click here, we'll go to servers, click on servers. Again, we see that we have two server in this default first site. Our DC01 and our DC02. All right, so we have successfully configured an additional domain controller. So if the primary domain controller for some reason crashes, the second domain controller will be able to provide all of the services for our network. So is there for redundancy. So instead of having one domain controller, we should be a single point of failure. We now have two domain controllers. So this brings us to an end of today's video. So make sure again to like the video if you like it, leave a comment, leave questions, share with someone who will find this video useful. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. But without further ado, this video comes to an end and I will see you in the very next video. Take care and I will see you for now. Bye.